Okay, in this lecture, uh, I would like to go over the Mueller's method. Uh, this is actually pronounced Mueller. Uh, I found out today on the internet. Mueller's method is based on approximating the, the function by a quadratic function. And then instead of solving, instead of finding the zero of the function, we can find a zero of the quadratic function. So let's say we have a, a function and we're interested in finding this zero here. Okay, that's the, that's the zero of the function. And the way we do it is that we pick three initial guesses. So we pick three values for x, let's see x1, and then x2, oops, put this back here, x1, perhaps another would be x in here, x2 would be there, and let's say a third guess would be x3 here. Let's say I don't know where the zero is, so I pick three guesses. And then if I look at the y values of those three axes, those three values for x, then I have y1, then I have y2, this should be y3, and this here would be y2. And then we look for a quadratic function that goes through these three points. So I have these three points here on the, on the original function. So we find a parabola, a quadratic function that goes through those three points. Okay. So it would be something perhaps like that. It's a parabola. Okay, so this would be a quadratic function. Now it turns out that it's uh, it's not too difficult to get the equation of this quadratic function. In fact, this is in the book on page 71. Let me write that in here for you. Here it is. The quadratic function is written in this way. Now it sounds, uh, I mean, it looks weird, but uh, the Mueller's method is actually obtained from another method that, uh, of interpolation, uh, polynomial interpolation. So we, uh, I don't want to go into that now, but anyway, this is another format of the quadratic function. But you can see this is a quadratic function, right? You have x, and then this x times this x will give you x squared. So this whole function here is quadratic. And uh, it goes through those three points. So that's the equation for the quadratic function here. And these coefficients c2 and d1 are found by these formulas. c2 is based on the y values and x values that are given. d1 is based on c2 and c1, which is given by this formula. So if you plug the numbers in, you should be able to get the quadratic uh, function. Now, notice that we started with three guesses, x1, x2, x3. So the algorithm, Mueller's method, is actually based on an iterative procedure. So we're going to get a new iteration based on those three. And then, so we, we're going to get x4, the new iteration x4, will be based on, the, on those three previous iterations. And then on the next iteration, x5 will be based on the previous three. So x4 is based on x1, x2, x3. x5 will be based on x2, x3, and x4, and so on. And uh, x4, so the new iteration, is obtained by the formula that you see there on page 71. Let me write that in here. So here it is. Uh, x4 is based on x3, x2, x1, and uh, there's an extra variable here just to make the formula simpler. S, variable S here is given by this formula. Okay. So now let's see how we're going to uh, uh, code this procedure. How are we going to write the program for that? So let me go here to uh, Notepad. And uh, let's put this right here. So I'm going to write function and uh, y equals to Mueller's, just Mueller. And then remember that when I call the function, I need three initial guesses. So I can say x not, x1. Well, actually, let's use x1, x2, and x3. Okay. Now I need to establish an error. So same thing, we, this thing will keep going until uh, we reach a certain tolerance. 
So let's put error. Let's make it big initially, and then here's the tolerance. And we want 10 to the negative 9. And then um, we're going to do this. So the iterations will run while the error is still big, or it's still greater than the tolerance. And then let's close the loop here. Okay, let's see what, what we're going to put inside. Well, inside, we're going to define the new value uh, x4. But notice here that x4 is based on a bunch of things here. So we need to put all those formulas first. So let's go ahead uh, and uh, define y1, y2, and y3. So we can say y1 equals to the function value at x1. And then y2 equals to the function value at x2. y3 function value at x3. Okay. Now I can define the c's. c1 is y2 minus y1, right, according to this, divided by x2 minus x1. c2 equals to y3 minus y2 divided by x3 minus x2. All right, d1 defined by c2 minus c1. Notice that I need to define c1, c2 before I define d1, so that the computer, the octa, will, kn will know the value of c1 and c2 before it computes the value of d1. x3 minus x1. And then finally, I need to uh, define x4, but notice x4 that needs s, the variable s. So let's define s first. That's c2 plus d1 times x3 minus x2. Finally, x4 equals to x3 minus, and then this, this will be in the numerator, 2 times y3 divided. Now let's open the parentheses so I can put this whole denominator in there. Okay. So that will be s plus, and then signal. Now I guess I didn't mention uh, anything about this function signal. Signal is a function that outputs uh, 0, 1, or negative 1, depending on the sign of the uh, of the value. For example, if I type signal, let's say 5, the output is 1. Okay, It's 1 meaning that this is a positive number. So if I say neg signal negative 3, it outputs negative 1, which means it's a negative number. Okay, And if I put signal 0, it outputs 0. So there are only three possible values. 1 if the value is positive, negative 1 if the value is negative, and 0 if the value is 0. Okay, so that's part of the formula here, and uh, so let's put that in here, so we get, oops, there it is. So we need to know signal of the variable s, and then that is multiplied by the square root of s squared minus 4 times y3 times d1. Close parenthesis. So that's x4. Okay. So I guess I can open this more. Okay. So that's x4. Now let's compute the error. The error is absolute value of the value of the function at x4 because x4 is a new iteration. Okay, and now it, uh, an important part is that if the error is still big, this needs to, to keep going. So I need to redefine x1, x2, and x3. Okay, so that the new iteration will use the values of x2, x3, and x4. So we can redefine the values. So we can say, for example, that the new value of x1 is actually the old value of x2. And then the new value of x2 is the old value of x3. And the old value of x3 
is the new value of x4. See, we're, we're transferring the values to the previous iterations. Okay. So in other words, let's say I have a... Let me explain that better here. Okay, so let's say I have three boxes here, okay? Well, four for x4. So this is the box for x1, x2, x3, and x4. So when the program starts, there will be a value here. Let's say, I don't know, for some reason I put two here, okay? And then x2, let's say the value there is 5, and x3, the value is 1. And then I compute the new value with this formula here. Uh, let's say, for example, that the new value, I have no idea what the new value is, so I'm speculating here. Suppose the new value is 8, okay? It might not be 8, but just to illustrate how the transfer of values occur. If, uh, let's say x4, now it's 8. Now, if the error is still big, so the iteration needs to run again. So that means I need to, the new value of x5, the next iteration, x5, we'll need to use the value of 5 here, 1, and 8. Okay, remember, the new iteration always uses the three previous iterations. But I don't want to use x5 and x6, x7. I can actually... Uh, maintain these variables here. All, uh, all I have to do is to transfer these values over. So I transfer this value to f 5 to here. And then once I do that, then I transfer this value here from x from x3 to x2. So to transfer 5 to this value here from x2 to x1, all I need to do in the code, in the program, is to redefine x1. So that's why I did there. x1 would be x2. Okay. In the computer, this is not an equation, this is just an assignment, okay? The new value of x1 will be the current value of x2. And then, how do I do this assignment here? The new value of x2, then, will be the current value of x3. And then to transfer this over here, to transfer the value 8 here, I assign x3 to the value of x4. Okay? So that's how I transfer the values. So this way I don't need x5. And then x4 will be the new value. Okay, that, uh, that's a trick that we can use to uh, to avoid introducing more variables. We don't need more variables. We can still keep these uh, four variables, x1, x2, x3, and x4. Okay, so that's what I did here. And then, what else? That's it. So let me close this. Let's output the value, y equals to x, actually x4, right? That's the, the last value here. And um, if I want, I think I mentioned this in class, I'd like to see how many iterations this take. This would take, so I start with k equals to 0, my counting variable, and then here inside the loop, I do k equals to k plus 1. So I press the roll button there. k equals to k plus 1, and then I'd like to output k to see the value of k. So let's save this. I need to save this as Mueller. There we go. Okay, let's go back to Octave here. And, uh, well, let's test the, uh, the function or the program with the, uh, with the function that we've, that we've been using, function f which is finding the square root of 9. Now remember, Mueller's method is uh, based on approximating the function with a quadratic function. But the function that we're going to use here is already quadratic, so Mueller, Mueller's method is actually uh, going to solve this in just one iteration, because it's uh, you're approximating a quadratic function with a quadratic function, so you're going to get the solution right at the first iteration. So let's see what happens. If I type Mueller, and then I need to pick three values, okay? So, I don't know, let's pick 1, um, 2, and 7. I know that the solution is x equals to 3. So there it is. Look at how many iterations it took. Only one iteration. And here's the answer, the square root of 3. Okay. So that's Mueller's method.